Hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching for take last time we reviewed the first stable build of Oxon OS 13 F22 for OnePlus Nord 2 you can check that video from the link given under the video description one week before we got a news of release of Oxon OS 13 F45 new update by some sources but that time there was no any official announcement done by OnePlus itself but some fact tubers circulated the news via YouTube videos though they even not got the OTA on their phones. But our channel never did any types of clickbaits for views. I was using the Oxonus 13 F22 and when yesterday I checked the software update, we got new update of Oxonus 13 F45 with the size 621 MB which has very small change log. For curiosity, I searched for official posts regarding this update by OnePlus on their site and on 20th of May, they first time released their official announcement for this new update. This update was released for the, all the global, European and Indian users. So we started the download and installation of this new update. Though this update has very small change log, we will thoroughly test this build like it's about phone details to confirm is this new update really updated the device on their latest sources or not. I also did the performance testing using the Geekbench 6. We tested the fluidity of ROM using the new jitter test. First time I am testing this device with the screen touch sampling rate which helps for the better gaming experience. I tested the stability of this update using the CP throttle. Finally at last I shown some bugs and given my final verdicts. So this update review is just not an ordinary review, it's in-depth analysis. So watch the video till the end. Now without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Phone started to boot into the OS. After installation of this update, let's move to our first timestamp of the video that is about phone details to confirm the new sources. In the OTA section, now it's showing you we are upgraded to the new Oxonus 13 F45 update. Under the about phone, we get the details of this new update with its change log. In the Android version, it's showing this is the same Android 13 build with the same material clock history. As most of Nord devices like Nord CE, Nord 2 already started to receive Oxonus 13.1 update, I am surprised that instead of this update, OnePlus has to give directly Oxonus 13.1 update to Nord 2. Android security patch is now updated to the May 2023. Last update was on the April security patches. Under the version section, it's showing the build number as F45. Kernel version is same like old build, it's 4.19.191+. So major changes has been done only for security patches. As per chain log, OnePlus has claimed that regarding stability and performance improvement. So let's start with the performance testing. As per initial impression of ROM, it's really felt better than old F22. Everything like apps opening, closing, switching between applications seems buttery smooth as compared to old build. Games are also running very smooth. I am not a gamer, but I try it with the simple application like Angry Birds. To check the RAM management, I will keep all the applications opened in the background. And after completion of Geekbench test, we will check if these applications are running in the background or not. ROM initially runs on the adaptive screen refresh rate. We didn't guess any force 90 hertz option in the developer setting. But you can use our Force 90Hz mod, its link is given under the video description. Under display setting of the phone, we just case the high and low refresh rate setting, but it's actually not Force enabling the 90Hz. So now first we will do the Geekbench test without performance mode. For CPU performance in the first round, I got the score of 1104 and 3116 for single and multi-core respectively. For old build, these results were 1094 and 3197. Both the builds have nearly same results here. Next I did the GPU graphics performance test. For OpenGL and Hukan graphics, we got the score of 4417 and 4552. For old build, we got these scores like 4569 and 4568. Here both the OpenGL and Hukan graphics score has slightly higher than F45. Next I enabled the performance mode option available under the battery setting of the phone. We will see if really this option improves the performance or not. After running the test on the performance mode, we got the score of 1247 and 2854. 
The issue of improvement in single core performance and downgrade in the multi core performance was happened here again. If you check the old F22 build, the results were very good like 1251 and 3414. So old build has better performance mode score as compared to the current F45. Similarly for the OpenGL and Hukong graphics, we got the score of 4764 and 4953. For old F22, these scores were 4726 and 4959. These scores are same for both the builds. So it's found that only for performance mode enabled CPU performance score were downgraded for current F45, rest is the same. But in real life, I can confirm this build has better and smoother experience as compared to the old F22. Now let's open all the application that we opened and kept in the background before running the Geekbench test. First I opened the Angry Birds and OMG. It's here in a memory even after intensive CPU test. Similarly, all the other applications are also running in the background. So I can confirm the RAM management is also outstanding for this update. Now let's do our second test called as UABN jitter test. Less will be the jitter volume, more will be the scrolling, swiping and in-app performance of the device. Use the UABench application given under the video description to test the jitter value. Open the application, tap on rendering option, then tap on jitter. So here I didn't found the constant results for the jitter value. It's fluctuating between 3 to 0 0.5 millisecond. It goes to the higher values anytime, which is not a good sign, but average value may remain between 1 to 1.5 millisecond which can be considered as a good value but not the best. Let's move to our another and first test that I am testing on this device that is screen touch sampling rate. More the value, more will be the touch response of the device and ultimately faster will be in-app user experience. This is especially useful for games. Use the screen touch sampling rate application. Its link is given under the video description. Open the app and slide the finger on the screen. You will get the screen touch input rates on the left side and output on the right side. Here you got the maximum 125Hz of screen touch sampling rate, which is low but consistent. For other devices like Nothing Phone 1 has 250Hz maximum and for 9RT we got 600Hz touch sampling rate in custom ROMs. Actually it all depends on the device screen and the kernel codes how much it supports the maximum values. If you check the screen refresh rate values for the games, I just tested the simple Angry Birds and its screen refresh rate capped to 60Hz. Though it's slow but it's constant during whole the game. I think this will work on all the games but to achieve the maximum 90Hz of screen refresh rate, please refer our force 90 years for PUBG game video, its link is given under the video description. So overall gaming experience on this update will be definitely good for all the games. Now let's check out the CPU stability using the CPU throttle application. All the previous tests for the Oxenus 12 to 13 were given me the bad results, so let's check out what will happen in this test. I ran the test on the 20 test for the 5 minutes, all the test went well until 2 minutes. But later a sudden downgrade in the graph performance were started and when I stopped the test I got the creepiest result till the date I got it just 68%. So it's confirmed that till the date, OnePlus failed to solve the CPU throttling issue in these updates. But this can be problematic only when you are using the CPU intensive task like heavy games, editing, etc. For general viewers, it's fine. Now let's check out the details as per change log. One thing of the change log that is updated the mesh security patch we already seen in the about phone timestamp of the video. Another one is the OnePlus fix the weather details not available sometimes for some applications. But now it's fixed, all the application will show the correct weather details. Another change is not a part of change log but I found it that is by just pressing the power button we can access the power menu. Previously we have to press the volume up plus power button to access it. Currently it's also available by volume up plus power button but can also be accessible by just pressing the power button. Volume down plus power button helps to take the screenshot. So we covered most important things. Now it's time to show you the bugs and the issues. First two bugs are related to the unlocked bootloader devices. If your bootloader is locked then you will not face first two bugs. First one is if you check the safety net using the Asnac application, CTS profile is getting failed so we can't able to run the banking or security applications. But you can root and follow our mod video to run security and banking application on such devices. 
both the routing and mod video links are given under the video description second bug is for the google play google play protect showing play protect is uncertified so some applications like netflix can't be installed it can be also solved by using the safety net bypass video next is the same issue that we all are facing from the oxon s12 if you try to boot into the fast boot it's showing the error and not booting into the fast boot it's the biggest drawback to the models who revive or modify their phones using the fast boot if you didn't like this update you can use the downgrade file given under the video description that will downgrade your phone to the oxon s12 you have to just enable the developer setting and flash the downgrade file using the local install option available in the OTS section. Please follow the old downgrade video link given under the video description. So this is all about the new Oxon S13 F45 for the OnePlus Nord 2. I definitely recommend you to install this over F22 because it's more fine tuned and has lots of underwood improvement as compared to the old build. Finally, if you like my work, then please do like and share this video, subscribe our channel, press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.